Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Together, everybody, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. We humble ourselves before you. Enable us to listen to your word. Speak, for your servants are listening. Our monthly verse for the month of April is found in the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. Proverbs 10, 19. Sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. What and why we believe? Question. Who is the Redeemer of God's chosen ones? The only Redeemer of God's chosen is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Eternal Son of God, who became man. He was, and continues to be God and man, in two distinct natures and one person forever. Again, who is the Redeemer of God's chosen ones? The only Redeemer of God's chosen is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Eternal Son of God, who became man. He was, and continues to be God and man, in two distinct natures and one person forever. This is the story of a runaway with no way home and no way out. I threw the best of me away. I had my chance. It's too late now. Too far gone and too ashamed to think that you'd still know my name. But love refused to let my story in that way. Found my way to you I couldn't cross that distance Even if I wanted to You came running after me When anybody else would have turned and left me at my worst Love moved first oh. 
been marked by your presence This one thing I won't forget Oh, how mercy met dirty The day my life was spent And I've been healed by those nailed hands through the lowest of nights <laughs> and I'm no longer a dead man Now I walk in the light So testify If God still provides Tell the truth If he's been good to you Raise a shout If he brought you out Everything with breath Sing praise How could we ever be silent
So testify If God still provides Tell the truth If he's been good to you Raise a shout If he brought you out Everything with breath Louder and louder Louder and louder Make it louder and louder Until the whole world knows Until they know Make it louder and louder Make it louder, make it louder hey. Make it louder, make it louder Come on, sing it out Until the whole world knows Make it louder, make it louder hey. Make it louder, make it louder Make it louder, make it louder Until the whole world Until the whole world Make it louder, make it louder, hey, make it louder, make it louder, make it louder, make it louder to the whole world, until the whole world.
Christ and be sober, moving only in the Spirit. As aliens and strangers in a hostile foreign land, the message we're proclaiming is repentance and forgiveness. The offer salvation to the dying race of man. To love the Lord our God is the heartbeat of our mission, the spring from which our service By the passion of the flame, stewing life unsparingly throughout a darkened room. Let us burn to know Him deeper than a service flaming bright. We'll radiate His passion and blaze with holy. Heavenly Father, we thank you and call on your name. You alone are our God and our strength. You have taught us to continually seek your presence and remember the wondrous works you have done. You never promise what you will not keep. You never fail, regardless of how small and insignificant we might appear. You have a people purchased by the blood of your Son. And you will bring them all into glory. But Lord, we have sinned, and failed, and doubted this week. We have not been who we are in Christ. We have loved the world, and ignored your word. We have forgotten you, by thinking so much of ourselves. Please forgive us. Thank you because your word gives us the confidence, that you will forgive us. You have saved us, redeemed us, called us, you have purchased us, predestined us, foreknown us, justified us, and glorified us. We are yours. And all of our hope is in you. We believe we will stand in the day of judgment only because of your precious Son. He has done all of this for us. Even more, he has given his life in exchange for ours. Thank you. 
Lord, we lift up our prayers to you. We pray for our country, its people and leaders. May we as a nation look upon you for blessing and guidance in light of the pandemic. May the government, the president, secretaries and advisors be able to procure the right vaccine for us and hopefully bring about normalcy into our lives. Bless UCC Church. Bless Elder Dex. Bless the deacons, the volunteers and our members. May your church be a salt and light to its surrounding. May we be sensitive to your leading. May we follow your will and plan and be a church after your own heart. Put into our hearts and minds your own thoughts and purposes. We believe that you are continually molding us to be the kind of church you want us to be. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing down the numbers of people infected with the virus. Thank you for your mercy. Continue to help us follow the safety social protocols to bring the number down even more. We pray for Pastor Nikki as he ministers your word to us today. Speak through him, anoint him to preach your word, and may we all be obedient hearers. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Our sermon passage for this morning is found in Colossians chapter 4 verses 2 to 6. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. In all the writings of the Apostle Paul, his concern for the advancement of the message of the gospel is very much evident. In fact, his primary motivation in writing his letters and addressing various local church issues is that he wanted the work of the gospel to flourish. That was his passion. Uh, that was his most earnest desire. Now in this letter of Paul to the Colossians, uh, the letter that we have been studying for weeks now, we see this concern throughout. He warned his readers about the dangers of a particular heresy. Uh, this False teaching sought to undermine the nature of Christ, uh, his supremacy, and also the sufficiency of the accomplishments of Jesus Christ. Imagine that. Believing and proclaiming a wrong Jesus, a false Jesus, would certainly have a negative impact in the lives of the hearers. And it would certainly impede the advancement of the cause of the kingdom. But not only was the Apostle Paul concerned about the belief system of these believers, but he was also concerned about their life witness. His desire was to see them live lives uh, that manifested the transforming power of Jesus Christ. In our passage this morning, Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 to 6, there are three issues that concern the advancement of the gospel uh, that the Apostle Paul addresses. Allow me to read this passage to you. You may want to follow along as I read this to you aloud. Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 to 6. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. 
and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Verse 6, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. We have titled our message today as Advancing the Cause of the Gospel. The first concern of the Apostle Paul that relates to the progress of the kingdom cause is that of the believer's prayer life. Right. Those two go hand in hand, don't they? Huh? The, the advancement of the cause of the gospel and that of the prayer lives of believers. In our effort to proclaim the gospel, what we pray for is of utmost importance. We can pray for a lot of things. And most often than not, we find ourselves praying for temporal needs. And that's okay. We don't want to belittle that. We are commanded in Scripture to ask, to ask for these things. But our prayers first and foremost, ought to be centered on the advancement of the gospel work. And Paul urges us to be devoted to this prayer. Not only does he call us to be fervent in prayer per se, but to be fervent in praying for the right things. And on the top of our prayer list, ought to be the progress of the gospel message. Now, let's pause here for a while and ask ourselves, what do we often find ourselves praying for? Huh? What, what specific items fall under this list, under, under this concern, you know, of the progress of the gospel work? Well, how about this? Mission work. Do we pray for that? Uh, not only should we be praying for this during our corporate prayer times, but even during our private prayer times. We should be praying that mission work would thrive in, in the midst of difficult circumstances, such as uh, what we are going through right now. We ought to be praying for missionaries, their needs, their concerns, and especially their challenges in the field. We ought to be praying also for peace to reign, uh, that God would create an atmosphere that is conducive for evangelization. And we ought to be praying for the spirituality of our local churches. Huh? Uh, that our, our witness would grow and would burn brightly so that many, many more people would come to faith in Jesus Christ as they see our witness shining brightly. Paul not only urges us to pray uh, fervently, to be devoted in prayer, but he also tells us to be sensitive when we pray. He tells us, be watchful. That's sensitivity, isn't it? Uh, we have to be sensitive to the Spirit's movement, not only in our lives, but also in our surroundings. For instance, just uh, for instance, uh, let me bring it closer to home. We're experiencing this pandemic. We're in a crisis situation. And oftentimes, our focus is on our needs, our protection, our health. Now, while those things are seriously uh, 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 important, but sometimes we can be so overwhelmed with fear. All our focus is, is on ourselves. 
that we fail to consider what God wants us to pray for and how God would want us to use this occasion, to use what is going on in order to advance His kingdom cause. Just think about that. Why are we in this pandemic? What is God's purpose in all this? Huh? Uh, simply to make people suffer? Isn't it that behind uh, certain events, we see God's desire to advance His kingdom cause? And we ought to be sensitive to that. Have we been praying that in the midst of our pandemic, the mission work would continue. The mission work would thrive. And more and more people would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We also have to be sensitive to the work of the enemy. Uh, and pray that God would thwart his efforts in preventing uh, the advancement of the gospel. Also, the Apostle Paul tells us to pray with thankfulness. I love this. We ought to be grateful uh, for the work of the gospel in our lives and in the lives of others. And this is wonderfully seen in, uh, in uh, the first of verses, the first section of this letter. We see the Apostle Paul uh, uh, telling the Colossian believers of his prayers for them. And he begins this prayer, you know, with a prayer of praise and gratitude to the Lord for what is happening in the lives of these people. In Colossians chapter 1, 3 to 4, uh, we read this. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Why is that? Uh, because we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. Wonderful, isn't it? You know, he, he thanks God for the transforming effect of the gospel message in the lives of the Colossian believers. And most evident in their lives is that of love for the saints. Uh, they are demonstrating sacrificial love for the brethren. We also read in verse 6 uh, uh, to verse 8. All over the world, he says this, all over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. Paul, as he gives praise to God, recounts, you know, uh, the first time these people heard the gospel message. And it was through a person named Epaphras. And Epaphras uh, was their pastor, their church planter. And he was the one who faithfully proclaimed this gospel message. And when they, had, when they have received the message, oh, it changed them. It changed them radically. Uh, from being selfish people, uh, sinners, rebels, now they are living in obedience to the will of Christ, exhibiting much love in the Spirit. And then we read in verse 12, giving thanks to the Father, he says, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of, this inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. The Apostle Paul was very much convinced about the genuineness of the faith of these uh, believers in Colossae. They were not mere professors, but they were exhibiting the fruits of genuine conversion 
They showed love for, uh, for the saints, it says there. Love for other believers. And that's a mark of, uh, of true conversion, isn't it? And because of this, the Apostle Paul did not hesitate to thank God for His transforming power. Likewise, our prayers ought to be thankful prayers. Whenever we learn about conversions, uh, news about uh, the transforming effect of the gospel message in the lives of other people, we too should be quick in giving praise and thanks to God for His mighty acts. Now, we also ought to pray that God would provide us with more open, open doors, more opportunities for the proclamation of the gospel. That ought to be on the top of our prayer list. When we wake up in the morning, what do we pray for? Huh? We ought to pray that God would grant us with opportunities to share our faith during the day. And such is the prayer of the Apostle Paul. We read in verse 3, And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. As you may know, Paul was in house arrest when he wrote this letter. He was in chains. He was uh, on trial for his faith. Certainly, he was not in. Uh, he was not experiencing pleasant uh, circumstances. Most of us, if we were placed in such a situation, our focus would be on ourselves, on our hardships, you know? We would wallow in self-pity, and we would fail to see God's purpose for our being in that situation. Not so the Apostle Paul. But Paul, Paul was very much conscious of the purpose of God in putting him there. He realized that God placed him there not to suffer, not just to suffer, uh, but to testify for Jesus Christ, uh, to be a witness, and to reach out to people who would not be otherwise reached uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ through conventional means. I uh, love what he says in his letter to the Philippians. That's another letter written in the same, uh, same situation. You know, he was in Rome, imprisoned. And this is what he says in his report. He tells us that the whole Praetorian guards heard about the gospel message. I love that. Uh, the Praetorian guards were special soldiers of Caesar. You know, they were, they were there to guard Caesar. I'm sure these soldiers wielded tremendous influence on the emperor. And you know what? By being imprisoned, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul had the opportunity to proclaim the gospel to these guards. Tremendous. He also adds in chapter 4 of that same letter, Philippians, the whole household of Caesar give you greetings. What does that mean? You know, this may refer to some relatives of Caesar or some staff members, you know, of, of Caesar working for Caesar. These people heard of the gospel message most probably from the witness of this prisoner, the Apostle Paul. He was not focused on himself, his difficult situation, no, but he was focused on God's purpose for him being there, which is to be a witness for Jesus Christ. And so, he prayed for opportunities. He prayed for more open doors to proclaim the gospel message. Further, 
He tells us that we should pray, huh? we should pray that we would be able to proclaim the gospel with clarity. We would be able to proclaim the gospel message with preciseness. Verse 4, he continues on with his prayer request. He says there, pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Whenever we encounter pressure, uh, pressures from people, uh, pressures from the situation, we are tempted to water down the gospel. Huh? We, are, we are tempted to modify, to alter the message in order to, well, not offend certain people, perhaps people of influence. And... The Apostle Paul was in such a pressure-packed situation. As I've said, he came face to face with Caesar. Huh? He was on trial for his faith. And yet, the Apostle Paul proclaimed the gospel clearly. In another letter, but of the same circumstance, Paul asked for prayer support from his readers. We read in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. Pray for me, uh, pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So this ought to be our prayer for ourselves as well and for each other. Let us pray that we would be able to proclaim the gospel message clearly, precisely, without any compromise. And that necessitates courage, boldness, huh? and that ought to be part of our prayers as well. The second item uh, that we see that was uh, an urgent concern of the Apostle Paul is that of the believer's behavior. If we are truly committed to advancing uh, the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel message, then how we live our lives ought to be a major concern for us, right? Uh, notice the command of the Apostle Paul in verse 5. Take this seriously. It says here, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Notice that he commands us believers to be wise. Huh? Oh, what does living wisely mean? Well, the the book of Proverbs, uh, particularly Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10, may help us in understanding this. It says there, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Notice there, he says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What does fear mean? It means Taking God seriously. It means living in reverence, reverent awe. Huh? To live in submission to the will of God. That's what being wise is all about. One who lives wisely lives in submission to God. And our submission is evident in our day-to-day -day obedience to His will. Huh? We ought to live with this consciousness, uh, consciousness in our minds that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is our Lord. And we are His followers. We ought to live in daily submission to His will. Now here's another passage that explains wise living. He tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. It says there, be very careful then how you live, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. 
uh, underscore uh, that statement, be very careful. That's what wise living means. It means we live carefully and responsibly. Uh, one who puts the advancement of the gospel as his top concern, as his primary concern, will live carefully. He would live with, uh, with consciousness of how his behavior would affect other people. Are we living with that consciousness? Are we living our lives aware of the fact that our behavior may be used by God to draw people to himself? But it could also be used as a stumbling block by the enemy, preventing others from coming to faith because of our disobedient lives. A person with no passion for the gospel uh, would, would care less about how his actions would affect others. He tells himself, I will live the way I want to. And no one is going to tell me how to live my life. No one is going to dictate that. Further, a wise person uh, is someone who lives with a sense of urgency. He lives with a sense of urgency. And notice what our passage in Colossians says, make the most of every opportunity. And this is further explained huh? in Ephesians chapter 5. We read verse 15. Well, let me read that passage to you up to verse 17. It says there, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Since times are getting worse and worse, and evil is progressing in all the world, I mean, that's what the Bible says. And that's what's taking place in our times today. So all the more, we ought to do everything in our capacity to advance the, the kingdom cause, huh? the cause of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the entire world. Add to that, our time here on earth is brief, it is fleeting. Certainly, we don't have any control over our lives, right? I mean, we never know. We never know when God would take us home, whether by way of death or by way of second coming. And again, this behooves us to be faithful in, in, in the use of our time and the different opportunities that God is providing us. Just a recap, we ought to pray for the advancement of the gospel. Uh, further, we ought to live in a way that gives evidence to the transforming power of the gospel. We have to live wisely. That means uh, being in submission to His will, being obedient to Him on a daily basis, living carefully, responsibly, and with a sense of urgency. Now the Apostle Paul deals with the area of the tongue. He deals with the believer's speech. Paul continues to issue his apostolic command. We read in verse 6, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Now one thing we have to remember is that the gospel is a message that ought to be spoken. Huh? It's a message that has to be shared. Oh, as important as behavior is, behavior alone cannot say. Behavior alone cannot communicate the gospel to other people. 
ultimately, we must speak out the gospel message. I love what uh, the great evangelist Billy Graham says. He said, actions speak louder with words. I mean, let's not demean uh, our speech. God uses our speech in order to communicate the gospel message with others. And the Apostle Paul, in, li in light of that, uh, tells us our speech ought to be characterized by graciousness. Uh, we have to be gracious in sharing the gospel. We have to be gracious, pleasant in uh, communicating the message of salvation with other people. The gospel is offensive in itself. We get that. Uh, uh, for instance, it reveals the sinfulness of man, doesn't it? I mean, just by confronting people with sin, telling them that people, we, all of us, are wretched, we are rebels, and we are destined to go to hell as a result of that. I mean, isn't that offensive? I believe it is. You know, it calls people to repent, to repent of their, of their false beliefs, uh, and exclusively put their trust in Jesus Christ. We would always use the passage in John chapter 14 verse 6, wherein Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. I mean, that's an exclusive message. And that in itself is offensive. Huh? While we should never modify the message, however, we should proclaim it and always do so with kindness, with respect. Further, the Apostle Paul tells us to characterize our speech with readiness. Huh? Not only graciousness, but readiness. The uh, Apostle Peter, in his first epistle, chapter 3, verse 15, tells us that we should always be prepared. Huh? Always be prepared to give an answer to whoever asks you for the reason uh, the reason for the hope that we have. We, who have experienced saving grace, should always be ready, always be prepared to tell others of the hope that we possess. All in all, beloved, how concerned are we about the advancement of God's kingdom? Huh? Is that, is that a priority for us? Do we live with passion uh, for the proclamation of the gospel message? It ought to reflect in our prayer life. What do we pray for? It ought to reflect in our behavior. Are we living in daily obedience to His will? Are we careful and living responsibly, knowing full well that our lives are being used by God to draw others to Christ. And our passion for the advancement of the gospel, of course, is manifested in the way we speak, how we speak, and what we say. We, at Union with Christ Community Church, we make it our custom to observe the Lord's Supper every fourth Sunday of the month, and it is the fourth Sunday today.
while we cannot observe the Lord's Supper together physically, yet I do believe that we can do so online. Have your elements ready so that we can uh, together uh, observe this rite that the Lord Jesus had commanded us. Have the wafer ready, which is symbolic of the body of Jesus Christ uh, beaten, bruised on our behalf. Have also the cup ready with the juice. And this is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ. And as the Apostle Peter had said, that precious blood, more precious than silver or gold. And this was payment made by Jesus Christ in order to satisfy the just demands of God and redeem us from our own sin. One of the wonderful terms that are used in order to describe uh, the, this rite is that of Eucharist. I love that term, which means thanksgiving. This rite is a way for us to thank God for what He has done, the, the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation that He has bestowed to His own people. It is important that we give thanks to Him. In this rite, we highlight the works of Christ, not our works, not our sacrifice, but His. And that is worship, isn't it? This is, an all, this is also an opportunity for us to look within ourselves and confess our sins, to rid ourselves of every encumbrance, any sin that gets in the way of our walk with Jesus Christ. And so let me invite you to bow down your heads before the Lord and take this time to confess your sins and also renew your commitment to Him. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are eternally grateful for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for giving yourself voluntarily, knowing full well that it is only your sac sacrifice that would fully satisfy the just demands of God the Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy and your compassion. We confess our sins. Anything, Lord God, uh, that gets in the way of our walk with Jesus Christ, please rid us of all these things. Bring these sins to mind so that we may confess them, be it the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the boastful pride of life. Lord, we confess these sins to you and ask for a change of mind a change of behavior. We pray also that we would renew our commitment to follow Jesus Christ all the way. Lord, use us, our hands, our feet, our whole being in order to serve you and bring glory and honor to your name. May we Live in obedience to your will. Thank you. We pray all of these in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, that night that he was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks to the Father. He broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this, eat this as often as you can, 
in remembrance of me. So, shall we all partake of the bread? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your body beaten and bruised so that we may be made whole in you. Thank you, Lord. In the same manner, the Lord Jesus Christ, he took the cup and he said, This is the new covenant in my blood, which is for you. Do this, drink this as often as you can in remembrance of me. So shall we all partake of the cup together. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your precious blood shed for the redemption of our own bodies, for your glory and for your honor. Lord, continue to do your uh, work of cleansing and renewing. Build us up in the faith. Help us to grow more and more to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may His sacrifice be constantly on our lips the good news of the salvation that He has brought us, Lord, may it be a constant uh, uh, declaration from us, Lord. May we never fail to give praise and honor to Your name by proclaiming Your gospel message. So we thank You and we give You praise. Amen, amen, amen. May God bless you all. If you are a regular member of UCC Church and you wish to give through bank deposit or bank transfer, here are our bank details. Kindly email deposit slip or transfer confirmation receipt to write to uccc at gmail.com. Let me repeat, write to uccc at gmail.com. UCC Church, please join our online Bible study to be led by Dr. Neil T. every second and fourth Friday of the month. Thank you. Next week's speaker is Pastor Billy. There is a candle in every soul some brightly burning and some dark and cold and there is a spirit who brings a fire ignites a candle and makes his own carry your candle and run to the darkness seek out the helpless Confused and torn And hold out your candle For all to see it Take your candle And go light your world Take your candle And go light your Frustrated brother See how he's tried to Light his own candle Some other way See now your sister She's been robbed and lied to Still holds a candle Without a flame So carry your candle Run to the darkness Seek out the lonely The tired and warm And hold out your candle For all to see yeah. Take your candle and Go like the world Take your candle
whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles and light up the sky. Pray unto our Father in the name of Jesus. Make us a beacon in darkest times. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, deceived and We confess the mystery and wonder of God made flesh and rejoice in our great salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, the Son created all things, sustains all things, and makes all things new. Truly God, He became truly man, two natures in one person. He was born of the Virgin Mary and lived among us, crucified, dead, and buried. He rose on the third day, ascended to heaven, and will come again in glory and judgment. For us, he kept the law, atoned for sin, and satisfied God's wrath. He took our filthy rags and gave us his righteous robe. He is our prophet, priest, and king. Building his church, interceding for us, and reigning over all things. Jesus Christ is Lord. We praise his holy name forever. Amen. Loving God, thank you for hearing us this morning. Thank you for encouraging us and feeding us with your word. And now go into the world as salt and light. Tell others about God's love. Do not be afraid and bring out the glory of the living and glorious hope that is in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name, receive God's blessing. Amen and amen. May the road rise to meet you, may the wind blow at your back, may the sun shine warmly on your face, may the Worship service ends here. God bless everybody.